Hello and welcome to another episode of the latest episode of And Injustice for All MMA. My name is David and this episode is for UFC Fight Night, Allen vs. Craig. It took me a long time to make this episode because I've been working. I've been working. There's no excuses, man. There's no excuses. But I've, I've been working. So I've been basically scoring this three fights at a time. Scored a couple on the, the night of the fight. The night of the card. Had to go to work. Then the ne- did it again and again. I'm just, I'm just rambling here. There's no point. But it took me a long time to get to this. But we're here finally. There's no injustices. No one got robbed. There isn't some stupid 10-8 that robs the fighter of their win. There's none of that. We just have... We just had some interesting fights and a couple scorecards that were weird and awkward. We start with the first fight of the night. Johnson versus Estevam. Estevam? Estevim. I, yo, this is an interesting... This is the first time I've seen this spelling before. Este, Estevam. Johnson versus Estevam. This is basically Johnson fighting against another person who's just going to continue to take him down. And you know what's so pissy about this fight is that it's another fight where Johnson has the advantage in the striking, but every time he strikes, his sh- his strikes are like like a centimeter short of his of his targets of the targets of of his opponent's face, and it just pisses me off because in a way, there's probably like three fights that Johnson should have won in his UFC career, but whatever. They should keep him because he's. He's actually he's a very fun fighter to watch on in the in the flyweight division. Anyway, all right, so it's Johnson versus Estevam. I had this twenty nine twenty eight to Estevam. First two rounds go to Estevam. Last round goes to Johnson. In the first round, Estevam had two takedowns with ground and pound. Second round, Johnson had a reversal, and he outstruck Estevam on the feet. But Estevam had two takedowns with ground and pound for basically two plus minutes. So that round also goes to him. In the third round, Estevam basically gets tired. And Johnson is just like, all right, this is my round entirely. He outstrikes Estevam for the entire round. Estevam had a takedown close to the end of the like close to the end of the round, but it was irrelevant. It didn't matter. Uh, Johnson outstruck him the entire round. He pressured him the entire round. Estevam was tired. He was running the entire time. Boom. You go to the you go to the judges' scorecards. All right, and I believe all three. Uh, all three have it the exact same way. Uh, Derek Cleary, Saul D'Amato, and Chris Flores. I don't know why I marked this down if all three of them had it the exact same way. 29-28. <laughs> We're starting off weird. I wasn't even supposed to mention that. What was the reason for me mentioning this? Oh, uh, the, the, okay, there we go. So the last round, you could maybe argue a 10-8. I didn't give a 10-8 because if... if I think half of the missed strikes by Johnson landed on Estevam. We can we can actually probably put down a 10-8. The problem is, yes, he was out striking him. He won this round. There's no argument here. Is that this could have been a 10-8 in the sense that one, he did dominate the entire round. He outstruck him the entire round. You can argue a 10-8 off of those qualifications. But if the damage was there, that word again, if if he had just landed half of his missed strikes half of his missed shots, we are looking at a 10-8 here. So that's why I marked that down. We go to the next we go to the next fight. Ogden versus Moda. This was an interesting fight because all of Ogden's fights that I've seen so far, he's lost all of them. So I'm in my head I'm thinking, okay, this is either an Ogden loss or he finally he finally shows out. But this time he showed out. He showed out. He was he was he, he was winning the entire fight. So in the first round Ogden outstruck uh uh, Moda, and he had a takedown with some ground and pound. Second round, the same thing. Ogden outstruck Moda. This time, he outstruck him by a wide margin. I want to say pl- twenty plus strikes, and he had a takedown as well. First two rounds, ten nine for for Ogden, and then we go to the third round, which is Ogden is on top of Moda. He's he, he has ground and pound. He's outstruck him, and he's going for a submission. And in my head, while watching this. While watching this, 
I it, I was whispering to myself because I you know anytime I see the ref, the ref go in and he's like he's antsy. I'm like no dude, just don't fucking don't stop this, don't stop this, and he was breathing. I could hear it. It didn't sound like a gargle, which is what Beltron said. He was like I heard I heard a snore. I heard I heard you was sleeping. It's like no no no. I could hear the breathing. There's an audible difference. Um, I feel for for Beltron. Because maybe he misheard and he was like, ah, I got to stop this. But it, it it sucks because Ogden was going in for a submission. It wasn't fully in, obviously. <laughs> it wasn't fully in. And Beltron stops it early. Boom. Now we have a no contest. The sucky part is it's it's this weird scenario where you have to mark this a no contest. And I, and I haven't checked any. Uh, I haven't checked the bonuses. I haven't checked the. Uh, the post fight press conference to know if Ogden actually got his 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 check or not but in the case they were saying oh man the win doesn't matter as long as he got his money yeah but no like there's a weird thing where this fight correctly should be called a no contest given that it was stopped incorrectly and it didn't give Moda a chance to come back and it didn't and it didn't fully show that Ogden was going to finish him, but it did show that Ogden was winning the entire time. That's the weird bit about this whole thing is that you wish in your head that Ogden just gets given the victory, but they just can't do that given the fact that Beltron stopped it early. So that's the, that's the shitty part that happened in the third round of this fight. So no contest in that fight. Um, you go to the judges scorecards and I believe, uh, there's some goofiness. So you go, Saul Diamato, he gives the first two runs to Ogden. That's correct. Jacob Montalvo, first two runs to Ogden. Chris Lee, honorable mention to Chris Lee. It's a stupid scorecard. He gives the first round to Ogden. He gives the second round to Moda. I don't know what the fuck he's watching. He gives the second round to Moda. What? This is this is disgusting. This is a really bad scorecard. I mean, second round to Moda. Moda is outstruck, I think, 20-something straight. There's no... It's, if he's going off of... The one wobble that happened in this round where Ogden kind of gets wobbled. He didn't get dropped. He got rocked. He didn't get dropped. He didn't fall to the ground. He got rocked and then he proceeded to outstrike Moda clear. Even before the even before the, the slight rock. No one scores these like this. And in no imagination do you show this to someone and go, hey, look at this. And you're like, oh, he rocked him. And then he proceeds to get his ass beat for the rest of the entire round. This is a really, really... And then he gets taken down also. I mean, it's a stupid scorecard. It's a really bad scorecard. It's an honorable mention there to Chris Lee. Re really, really bad scorecard. Um, you go to the next fight, and that's Pudilova versus Perez. 29-28 um, for Perez. First two rounds he gave to Perez. Last round he gave to Pudilova. <laughs> In that first round, Perez got a takedown with ground and pound for three plus minutes. Second round, uh, uh, Pudilova had a, I'm uh, sorry, Perez had a takedown with ground and pound for four plus minutes. Possible 10 8 here, given that she basically got the takedown at the start of the round and never got back up, but the amount of ground and pound wasn't enough to really put a 10 8 in my mind, but there. And then you go to. And then you go to the third round where Pudilova had two takedowns with ground and pound and a submission attempt. That round belongs to her. You go to the judges scorecards and uh, and Derek Cleary, he gives the first two rounds to Perez. Gives the second round a 10-8. Ten, a ten okay, I wouldn't do it, but he did. Uh, last round of Pudilova. His scorecard is 29-27. And then the other two judges, uh, Sal Diamato and Chris Flores, their scorecards uh, reflect mine. Um, so there's that. Uh, you go to the next, you go to the next fight, all right, you go to the next fight of the night, and that's Parkin versus Machado, this fight should have ended in a split decision, I don't normally say that, but just watching this fight, it has split decision written all over it, I'm so, I don't want to even say surprised, I, I'm mad that it's a unanimous decision, I've seen a couple of those, and I can't complain about this one, I want, you know, if Machado was maybe a little more effective in the third round with the strikes, I could maybe argue um, a robbery. I can't. It's just the third round is close. It's what it is. Um, in that very first, in that very first round, 
Um, in the very first round, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, what did I write down? Hold on a second. I'm, I'm writing down some nonsense over here. Right, in the very first round, I think it's, here we go, I think it's, did I write this correctly? I think I did write this correctly, I just wrote, I wrote some stuff backwards, I'll switch that up in a second. Okay, so, in the first round, Machado had two takedowns and was outstruck by, by Parkin, all right, and then in the second round, Parkin had to, uh, Parkin outstruck Machado, and he had to take down with Grand and Pound for about two plus minutes, and then in the third round, it was close on strikes, but you give the edge to Machado, he was definitely outstriking Parkin, a lot of shots by, by Parkin, a, a lot of shots were missed, really, by both fighters, but, um, it was very close on strikes in that third round, and, and that's where I stop right there, I can't really argue a, a winner here, I gave it 29-28 to Machado, you can argue a 29-28 Parkin. Uh, you look at the scorecards. Um, Adelaide Bird, she added 29-28. She gives the last two rounds to, to Parkin. Um, Derek Cleary, the same. And Chris Lee, exactly the same as well. Um, you go to the next honorable mention, and that's Pierce versus Brito. That was, this was a fun, this was a really fun fight. Uh, um you know me. I'm always complaining about commentary. This is a. This is a. There was a. There was a part in here where <laughs> Pierce is complaining that Brito's hitting the back of his head, which he was, by the way. He was hitting the back of his head a lot of times, and it's only. It's only very few select refs who acknowledge it on the ground and pound. It's like, hey, watch the back of his head. Hey, watch the back of his head. I'm talking. I'm talking. Herzog, he'll acknowledge it. Like, hey, watch the back of the head. Uh, Mark Smith a couple times today was, hey, watch the back of the head, even though they're kind of close to not the back of the head, but he's still acknowledging, hey, don't fucking hit the back of his head. Herb is just like enjoying his time in the octagon, sipping a, uh, uh, sipping a beer, okay, sipping a mojito, smoking a cigarette, while Brito's fucking landing a hammer, hammer, hammer fist on the bottom to the back of Pierce's head. Nothing from him. It's only uh, it's only when Pierce is like, "Hey, he's in the back of my head, ref." Herb either not hearing it or just doesn't care. Decides, "Hey, keep fighting, keep fighting." And I'm like, "Oh, okay, cool, thanks, Herb." And then <laughs> Pierce does it again, where he's complaining, and Brito's just like, "Ah, nah," right, just mocking him. It's really fu- it's, it was funny in the moment. It caught me, made me laugh a little bit. Um, I don't know if that was in the second or the first round. I don't remember, but it's in one of the rounds. Um, that was a really fun instance in this moment. But in terms of the fight, per se, in the first round, very close. I mean, I, it's a toss-up almost. I gave it to Brito just based off of his ground and pound was more effective. Uh, he, he landed elbows instead of punches. That's what it came down to for me, if I'm just going to be purely honest about it. But it's a close round. You can really argue this for either person. Both were active in the clinch when they were in the clinch. Both were very active in the clinch. Um, both had some ground and pound when they were on top. And Brito had a takedown and 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 Pierce had a reversal. It all comes down to the type of ground and pound and Brito having the takedown, which gives him... Uh, the scorecard, in my opinion, but it's a close round. You can argue for either person, and then it ends in a submission for for Brito in the second round. Um, you go to the judges' scorecards, and that that's what it shows. Saul Diamato has a ten nine for Pierce, Chris Lee, and Tony Weeks has a ten nine for Brito. Um, you go to the next honorable mention. Oh shit! I said I was complaining about commentary. Dom, his commentary is just weird. He was he when Brito did the when Brito did the that. Ah, he was like, see, that's why he's doing the ad because he's, uh, because he's telling him that, uh, that he's doing nothing while taking him down. He was just saying some weird shit. And I was like, that's not why he did the ad. He did the ad because he was mocking. Anyways, whatever. I'm fucking, I'm, I'm just pissed about commentary. Dom tonight was crazy. Just certain, there were, <laughs> there were certain fights where he was just like, yeah, that's close. That's close. I'm like, is, is Biz being here tonight? Did Bisming teleport his spirit into Dom to just say hey, these fights are close? I swear, when Dom's Dom is Dom is worse than 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 uh, Dominic Cruz is worse than DC. When there's a takedown, he's just like, oh, 
he's this is close. He's won the round. I'm like, th- that's not what happened here. But anyways, that's me being annoying. Um, go to the next honorable mention. It's Medich versus Orubai. This was a very interesting fight. Um, 10-9 to Orubai in the first round. It ends in a submission in the second round for Orubai. But in the first round, it was interesting because on the feet, Medich is out striking Orubai for, I, I want to say, maybe six to five strikes. I can't remember at this point, but he's out striking him. And then Orubai takes him down the first time. And in my head, I'm like, okay, Medich is still winning because he gets up, takes him down the second time. I'm like, all right, gets up again. So I'm like, all right, okay, let's see if this will continue on the feet. Third time he takes him down. At this point, I'm like, okay, Orubai can win off of just effective grappling, right? He's taking him down three times, but he's done nothing with these takedowns. It's until the fourth and the fifth takedown where... He lands very little ground. I'm talking like if he was effectively outstruck on the feet, none of this would matter. But still, in the fourth and the fifth round, uh, excuse me, in the the fourth and the fifth takedown is when this kind of separates him from he's win, he's won this round. This is his round. Third, third takedown is when I'm feeling, okay, he might actually be winning this round. Third takedown, fourth takedown, fifth takedown. He's winning this round effectively. Very little ground. I mean... Very little ground and pound. Nothing super effective. Um, but he wins this round just off of five takedowns. Five straight takedowns. Um, that basically has that a 10-9 in, in, on my scorecard. And then you go to the judges' scorecards where uh, 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 Derek Clearly and John, and Jacob Montalvo have a 10-9 for Orubai. And then Anthony Mandis has a 10-9 for Medich. That's ridiculous. Honorable mention there. That's no, no, no. Once you, once he, once he hit the fourth takedown, you're like, okay, he's he's past the effective striking, uh, striking part, and and he's beating Medich. Um, you go to the next honorable mention, and that's Morales versus Matthews. These scorecards pissed me off. These scorecards were stupid, ridiculous. Okay, um, maybe yeah they were they were ridiculous in my uh i had this 30 27 uh morales all three rounds for for morales the last round you can argue 29 28 it's 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 close but morales still outstrikes matthews in my opinion it's close but you can argue that um in the first round he outstrikes uh morales outstrikes uh matthews second round he does the same third round he barely outstrikes matthews that's where that's where you get that. You go to the judges scorecards and some of them are retarded. They I don't know what they were watching. They're having convulsions. Craziness. You have Chris Morales, he has a 3027, his scorecard reflects mine. You have Derek Cleary who and and Saul Diamato who just don't make any sense who really lose me here. They don't make any sense in any capacity here. They give the first round to Matthews. Honorable mention off the top. It's fucking ridiculous. Honorable mention off the top. They give the first round to Matthews. And they give the last two rounds to Morales. If they're going to give the last round to Morales, given that he was he barely outstruck Matthews. I mean, you can even argue at, at the end of that round, he was just kind of going after... Uh, Matthews was going after Morales. You know, some people would maybe score that for, for Matthews. No, they give a 10-9 there on maybe the closest round of the fight to Morales give the first round, which is just a regular routine, he outstruck Matthews round, and they give that to Matthews. It's just ridiculous. Honorable mention above them. Um, and then you give the last one, the fight of the night. The last fight of the night. It's Allen versus Craig. Um, first two rounds, 10-9 for Allen. It ends in a submission win for Allen. Um, in the first round, Allen outstruck Craig. He had two takedowns with some grinder bound. He was striking him on the feet for a little bit. Then they decided to go to the ground. Two takedowns for Allen with a little bit of a little bit of grinder pound. Third, uh, second round, Allen had a takedown with grinder pound for two plus minutes. It was a decent grinder pound, decent grinder pound, but nothing that, in my mind, initiated the ten eight at all. Yes, he's bleeding, but it seems like when judges see blood, that means ten eight. So whatever. Um, you go to the scorecards. Uh, Derek Cleary, first two rounds to Allen, 10-9. Uh, Saul Diamond and Chris Lee give the first round a 10-9 for Allen. Second round, they give a 10-8. Because why, cause why not? Because why not? Well, fuck the class we had. Fuck it, here's your 10-8. But, boom. There you have it. Um, that's all I got. I'll be back next week. 
hopefully the episode comes out quicker. If it doesn't, what am I going to do? Um, thank you all for listening and God bless.